Welcome back to Counting Connection. For this segment, we are going to be talking about electric bikes and the possibility of their use on Summit County uh, <coughs> rec paths. And here to tell us about it are Michael Warzel and Catherine King from the Summit County Open Space and Trails Department. Welcome. Thanks for having us, Julie. All right, so um, let's start off by uh, ha going through a little bit of background about why Summit County is exploring the use of e-bikes on our recreational pathways. Well, in August of 2017, the Colorado State Legislature passed a bill that allowed Class 1 and Class 2 e-bikes on paved pathways where pedestrian and bicycles are allowed. And, but they also allowed local jurisdictions such as towns, counties, or other jurisdictions to manage e-bikes um, with their own laws too. Okay, and so um, maybe Catherine, you could help us out with um, just what's the current baseline? So what do our regulations currently allow? So our regulations don't currently allow the use of e-bikes. Um, our rec path regulations prohibit all motorized use um, on the rec path, be it e-bikes or something else, except for people with disabilities per the, uh, the Disability Act. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so as we dive into this topic and kind of figure out whether e-bikes are appropriate or not on the Summit County system, um, how will we go out and explore that and gather public input? Well, uh, we are going to have an open house on February 28th at the County Commons from 5 to 7 where we're going to ask for public comment on e-bikes. In addition, we're going to have an online survey available on the County <laughs> Open Space website um, that will ask people about to give their input on e-bikes, whether they should be allowed or not, and different reasons why they should be allowed or perhaps not. And then the uh, Open Space Department will explore the feedback we get and make a recommendation. Okay, and then um, let's elaborate for people or at least provide a definition of what is a class one e-bike and a class two e-bike and um, so we have a sense of of kind of what we're talking about here. So a class one e-bike um, has a motor that kicks in um, when you're pedaling the bike, but it cuts off when you reach 20 miles an hour. Um, a class two e-bike also has a motor that will um, that can kick in when you're pedaling, but it also has a throttle. So you don't actually have to pedal a class two e-bike at all. You can use the throttle to move yourself along rather than pedaling. And that also uh, tops out at 20 miles at 20 an miles hour. hour. And then those are the two classes of e-bikes that the new Colorado state law regulates and allows on pathways unless prohibited. And then there's a third type of e-bike, which is class three, which uh, can be pedal assist, throttle, but its main component is that it exceeds, the electric motor can give you more power than 20 miles per hour. And one of the things about e-bikes is because they're kind of this new blossoming technology in the United States, um, Colorado wanted to take the initiative and say, hey, we're going to allow these unless otherwise, you know, prohibited by the local jurisdiction. So it's just an opportunity for people to check out this new te technology and decide, you know, is it appropriate on our rec path system or is it not? And the Summit County rec path system is about 55 miles and it's, it's, it's not just the county. Most of the county rec path is on forest service land. And then each town, Breckenridge, uh, Frisco, Go, Dylan and Silverthorne own and manage sections of the rec path too. So we're trying to come to this uh, decision kind of as a uh, as a group, and we're exploring this as a group because we like to keep a seamless rec path experience. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it'd be confusing to have a patchwork of regulations throughout the system. Right. A lot of times people don't even know when they're leaving county jurisdiction rec path into one of the sections of rec path that might be managed by one of the towns. So sure. yeah, it would be confusing. Um, so we, um, I know that we've gotten a little bit of feedback before we officially opened this um, process, um, this public process. So um, what do we know at this point in terms of the pros of allowing e-bikes on the rec path system? 
Well, uh, some of the pros of allowing e-bikes are that they make cycling more accessible for all users. Uh, so whether it's someone who's not adjusted to the Summit County alt altitude or someone who might have uh, some mobility issues like uh, a bad knee or something else, it, it's just it's a little easier to pedal an e-bike. Um, Another idea is e-bikes could alleviate traffic congestion because they make it more viable uh, to do longer commutes. They just make it easier. Um, some of the other pros, those are the, I think the two yeah, main pros. I think pros. those are the two, kind of the two one main um, pros that are being talked about in terms of using them for commuter use. Um, going to the grocery store and, and getting your groceries rather than getting in your car mm -hmm. and then commuting to and from work and That's running another errands. One. Yeah. E bikes could be seen as more of a car replacement because they potentially have more utility than an average bike because the electric motor gives you more power so you could carry groceries or kids or all sorts of different um, things mm -hmm. just a little easier than you can on a normal bike. Okay. And so what are some <clears throat> of the cons that we've heard so far? Uh, I think some of, most of the cons that we're hearing, I would say, are primarily related to safety. Um, people are concerned that e-bikes go too fast, and we talked about how the motor will shut off at 20 miles an hour, but of, of course, if you're going downhill, you can go faster than 20 miles an hour. And there's a big difference between going uphill under human power at five miles an hour versus going uphill on an e-bike at 20 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, so. That's, I think, what we hear the most of. Um, I think another thing is carrying capacity. Uh, people love the rec path. It's used a lot by, uh, by residents, visitors, special events. And can we accommodate this new use in a safe way that still keeps things enjoyable for everybody? And then maybe another thing that's talked a, li a little bit about is, um, as Michael mentioned, it's a really new technology, and we don't know how it might be evolving and how people might be able to modify the bikes to go faster than mm. 20 miles an hour and then how we keep people from taking the bikes where we might not want them like onto natural surface trails or in areas where we wouldn't want to see bikes. That's a really good point. It, just for this uh, public outreach and input, we're only talking about e-bikes on the paved rec pass system. But another concern we have is because electric motors are getting smaller, they're getting more powerful, and the batteries are getting better to power them. It's like, how do you tell the difference between an e-bike or an e-skateboard or uh, some type of Segway device or all these different type of new electric devices that might be out there? So what we're trying to focus on is the kind of industry standard of class one and class two e-bikes. But that's certainly a concern is this kind of proliferation of electronic motorized vehicles and whether they're appropriate on the rec path. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, for clarity, though, the scope of this process that we're going through really is just looking just at that class one and class two e-bike. Correct. Okay. On, and on the rec path and not natural surface trails at this right. point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and um, let's see. So let's just um, state again the um, date and time of the open house for folks who are interested in coming out and sharing their perspective. So the open house will be at the county commons uh, at the Buffalo Mountain and Mount Royal rooms from 5 to 7 on Wednesday evening, February 28th. And then the online survey will be available to people from February 20th to March 19th. All right, fantastic. And then they can access that from the um, Open Space and Trail section of the website? Yes. All right, fantastic. Um, any, um, any other things that you would like to add about um, this public process related to e-bikes? I think, I mean, one of the things I think is really interesting is that Summit County isn't the only community looking at this issue you know there, there was this state law but really um, a lot of the open space programs across the state are looking at this and trying to figure out what the best way to to manage this potential new use is so jefferson county boulder county uh, pickin county town of snowmass we know of a lot of other jurisdictions that are involved in a similar public process so it's going to be interesting to see how it all pans out okay fantastic all right. Well, Michael and Catherine, thanks for joining us here in the SCTV studio, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at that open house um, in late February. Thank you for having Sounds us. Sounds good. <laughs>
All right, we're going we're gonna to take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about some new strategies to protect our neighborhoods from wildfire.